where are you doing the blood spots routinely? And is that not also an incident study at the same time? Um, well, we're doing it in our lab. I mean, it's uh, in Amsterdam. And uh, the incident study, um, that, that would require, uh, I mean, uh, Colin Stewart is, is also luckily developing uh, the, the assay in his lab too. So there'll be two places in the world where this assay will be done. Uh, which is good because he's he's setting up a Barcelona clinic, which is which is excellent. Um, but uh, an incident study, I mean, is uh, you would it would require so much samples. I mean, if you really want to do that, it will also require so much money. And uh, the the assay which we do now is you first to have to punch the blood spot. You have to extract the the the, the lipids from the blood spot, and then you have have to inject them in the system and then it takes about five, six minutes before the, 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 the separation is done and the analysis is done. You can automate all this and you can make it faster, uh, but um, I f it, it still will take a lot of amount of money and, and also uh, because you will have to, if you say the incidence is one in hundred and thousands, if, if that would be the case. I mean, we all believe it's higher, it's, the incidence is higher, but if that would be one in 100,000, you would have to screen a lot of blood spots to obtain, obtain a, a good picture of the real incidence. So you would say, okay, I would like to have 200,000 of these analyses, or, or 100,000 to have one positive result. So that, that would be, and even if you would say, okay, I'm going to do 20,000 and I hope that the incidence is higher, it's still a lot of work. So that's why we haven't done that yet. Does anybody else have any questions? Oh, good. It was clear then. You got off easy. Well. Oh, sorry. So what I understood is you are trying to understand the cracking of the cardiolipine. Do you have any outlook to bring an influence that it will uh, work the right way? Well, there have been uh, thoughts on giving linoleic acid, uh, which I don't think that they have worked, but now we have a mouse model and we can test at least in a mouse if that's the case. But if you look at the way cardiolipin uh, is synthesized, the idea was that if you cannot do this, and if you, you accumulate these ones, monolysic cardiolipids, and you cannot make this. If you give a lot of linoleic acid, you would hope that there's more of uh, linoleic acids in the immature form, so that you would bypass uh, this, this step to, to get to, to this form. That was the idea of linoleic acid treatment, so you get a more prefab cardiolipin. But, um, and there are indications in the, in, in the red of uh, uh, the Dr. Sparagna who is studying that, that that might work, but there are a lot of hurdles there to, to take and uh, the, the diet might not be that palatable uh, because of the high fat content. And so um, to really be able to uh, in, influence this process, I mean, I think we're still far away from, from doing that directly. Uh, there are um, maybe uh, when, when we identify firmly what the enzyme is that's doing this, uh, if monolysic cardiolipins are toxic, and we still don't know that, and that's what we also hope to learn from the, from the mouse model. If these are really toxic, you might say that if we know how to inhibit this enzyme, we at least would have uh, well, cardiolipins which have four side chains instead of three which might be beneficial, but first we don't know if this is toxic or not, or uh, if the, which enzyme is this and if we can inhibit it. I mean, there are inhibitors of, of this enzyme in, in other systems which has been tested, but um, well, this, this, this is all speculation, but luckily now we have a mass model to be able to look at this more in detail. Um, just a quick question. Um, Dr. Kelly spoke in the last session about there being two different uh, kinds of Barth syndrome. All that this talk is, is focused on is the TAS one. This is not related to the other Barth syndrome. Um, no. Right. Okay. Thank you. Just out of curiosity, you, you said that, I mean, you stop the testing after if, if it's a negative um, blood spot, right? Yes. 
do you have any idea after that what some of these other, what these negatives have turned into? Like, are there any other similar diseases that um, might have the same problems? Uh, well, we don't routinely follow up on them, but generally if you see the, the clinical picture of what's described to us when they, they bring in these samples, luckily it's getting more uh, broad, so to speak. So. Um, we are also obtaining uh, what, what we think already on forehand are less likely of having bar syndrome. But it's good that these physicians think of bar syndrome and want to exclude it. So um, although we do not follow it up, I, uh, when they come in, I already, already know, have a good idea. Oh, this, this might be one or this might not be one. And you have also, when they come in, it's a, it's a very high suspicion. And then it's confirmed. And you say, OK, that's, that's, that's good. But um, no. That's, that we don't follow up on that. So just so I understand, at this point, you're only testing to see, using the mouse model to, to see if cardiolopin is toxic is that correct? And, oh. and you're, there, at this point, there's no, they're not even beginning to test what could cure it or, or treat it. Is that oh. correct? Well, I think the, all these um, efforts are, are in parallel. So there are different research which have different um, interests. Uh, and um, some of them are, are uh, to the, the, use the mouse to influence for instance, the diet, modulate the diet and see what happens with cardiolipid content. Others will be on a uh, enzymatic level to see if we can inhibit the formation of monolysis of cardiolipins and make more cardiolipin and see if that is beneficial or not. Um, to do use diet to, to get more linoleic acid into cardiolipin also, uh, and, and another approach. Um, and because now we have a a mouse model, we all have a readout to, to do so, but how, um, but, but you're right that at this moment we are really trying to identify what is, what is harmful or what is really the, the, the problem in Barcelona. Is this because we have not enough cardiolipin? Is this because we have accumulation of monolysis of cardiolipin? Is it because of the different composition of what cardiolipin is left? Uh, um, all these questions, if you do devise smart ex uh, experiments, you might answer them, uh, well, and then a lot easier in a mouse model where you can test it on a, well, on a mammalian so organism. So it's not just strictly testing. They are, they are starting to work a little bit with introducing things into the diet. Absolutely, absolutely. I mean, there so there are some trials already taking place. I, I it's mean, not still just a testing stage at this point. We, I guess we, we, what we is. did with for Zaza now is really validate the model. Okay, and he did that also. He looked at the heart; it's enlarged. He looked at the, the abnormal mitochondria; they're abnormal. We looked at cardiolipin; it's abnormal. So we now have a good model, and now we can start to do these experiments, uh, and th that's starting now. I can. The mic parents' perspective yes, on. Yes, it's on now. Sorry a parent's perspective on sort of where they are with the mouse model. Basically, they only got the mouse last year, and it took about eight months to figure out that the mice actually show the same characteristics of Barth syndrome as the boys do. And so they're sort of at the stage where now there's a ton of excitement in that room that they have this mouse, it has Barth syndrome, it has the gene, it has the heart condition, it's got a lot of the other features. And so they're right at the precipice now of being able to say, okay, let's devise a bunch of experiments, gene therapy, feeding it different diet, feeding it, you know, doing all kinds of different things to see if we can cure these mice of Barth syndrome or, or see different uh, reactions to different therapies. So I think we're sort of at the precipice. And I would say two years from now, my guess is we'll start to see a lot of the, the uh, results from attempts to treat these mice in different ways to see what results we get. But I would like to stress that it will take some time before we uh, can characterize this model properly, really know uh, the, the answers to, the, to the, the fundamental questions about what is going wrong in Barth syndrome, uh, 
and uh, getting hope or to, to get uh, a treatment or something that w will work. It's more easy to test, but it will be hard to obtain, that's for sure. On the blood spot tests, can you have them done in the United States? Say that you have a family line that you know um, has the bar syndrome and you have some males that have not been tested. Would they be able to be tested and then sent to your lab? Sure. I mean, you can put it in a regular mail. That's um, how stable it is. That's the advantage. You don't have to send it on dry ice, which is usually the transport costs, which are the highest. So no, we, we, get, we get blood spots from all over the world because we're, uh, or we were, uh, the only uh, site which would offer the essay. Luckily now Colin will be able to do it too. Following on Amy's question then, it actually does make sense to me. So once we have, in our family, we have the mutation, but there are other males who haven't been tested. Would it just actually make more sense just to test them with this method as opposed to the regular DNA testing? Absolutely. I mean, DNA testing is very valuable, especially for uh, if you want prenatal testing or something, because that obviously is something that, that this test cannot provide, or maybe, but not, not at this stage. But if you want to know if uh, an individual is affected, we know that also from blood spot that Colin uh, collected uh, from, his, uh, from, from the neonatal screening program, which turned out later on to be Barcelona patient, we went back and looked at them. They were all five or six years old, uh, these, these spots, and they still, we could do the diagnosis uh, on these neonatal blood spots. So we proved two things. First, that it's very stable and uh, that it's also possible in neonatal uh, samples. So yeah, the blood spot test is absolutely the test to do if you're thinking uh, about the possibility of bar syndrome, and especially if you are in a family situation knowing that bar syndrome is present. Um, this is just a comment. Could I, could I just say, Fred, I think I understand cardiolipin metabolism for the first time. So that was a wonderful talk. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Truly, I mean that. Um, I just wanted to comment about this issue about other boys in families. Um, we've tested a lot of families um, to look for uh, affected boys who, you know, didn't particularly seem to be affected. We've never found anybody uh, who, has, who has had Bath syndrome who's not had motor delay or something like that. So when we've looked amongst siblings, They've all been normal, unless they've had motor delay, problems running, low blood counts, infections. You know, I, I know I'm always going on to people about perhaps this is a very broad disease that can hide in lots of ways, but I think within a family, it's very easy for the family usually to have their eye in on it mm. and implicitly know whether a child has or has not got Bath syndrome. Okay. Thank okay. you very much. Yeah, thank you.